Before we uh, began with TAPAS, and TAPAS is simply the Tax Assessment Property Information System, before we get, began with that, we had an old system on a mainframe called PITS, Property Information Tax System or something like that. And very simply, it was a pretty rigid old mainframe system that didn't allow much flexibility and required, at least on the assessors, and I think all the departments process, really a lot of manual input. It was very uh, manually intensive and required a lot of day-to-day -day work just to keep each of the daily steps in the assessment and billing process moving forward. So there was a high motivation on the assessor's part to move away from that since, one, it was so labor-intensive, and also because we were beginning to really move into an environment of personal computers and more higher technology that allowed us to um, really look for a, a computer product that was more um, contemporary. So that was really how Tapas began. We started by thinking, well, we needed a system that integrated some of the functions of all the financial departments, the assessor, the auditor, controller, and the tax collector. That would be ideal if we could just have one system that would work with all those different financial departments. Likewise, we wanted something that would, out of the gate pretty much, embrace the elements of Proposition 13. Some of the products that were available at the time or in the process of being developed since all assessors across the state were really in kind of the same status in one fashion or another, was to figure out, well, did any offer all these elements of being automated or more modern or embrace new technology and at the same time incorporate the Prop 13 elements? For Marin County, we are too small of a county to be big and we're too big of a county to be small. We have about a $55 billion assessment role. We have about 100,000 parcels, and we have both secured and unsecured parcels. So if we were looking at buying an off-the-shelf system, we were maybe too small to influence the product developer to say, well, we want you to change your product just because we're Marin County. We weren't big enough necessarily to change a huge operation. At the same time, we wanted flexibility because for our county, um, we wanted to get out of this manual processing business. So it was important to us to have that flexibility and to have Prop 13 incorporated into the product. Seeing how other well products were being developed with Prop 13, we thought, well, you know, if we're going to go through that process with an independent developer, we might as well do it in-house. And that's how it really began. So the departments that use the product, and again, it was important that it incorporated this these Prop 13 logical pieces are the assessor, the auditor, controller, and the tax collector. The process kind of chronologically in the assessment process can begin in the assessor's office with new parcels or wherever that assessment is generated and move through the noticing process, whether it's supplemental noticing to the auditor, and the auditor's office reconciles whatever the noticing or billing process is, and it finally goes to the tax collector, where it actually gets billed to the taxpayer. Included in this process is even some kind of recognition of how important it is for the, the last person or end user in the chain of events, the taxpayer, to see a bill or a notice and to say, well, does it embrace all the elements of the mechanical pieces along the way as well as the statutory schemes and give a number or a billing number that can make logical sense to the taxpayer who's reading that bill. So it goes from start to finish through all those three departments. Prior to TAPAS and the things that are most important to the assessor that came about with the TAPAS product was Really, we wanted to get out of this mechanical handling of each individual assessment record. We had appraisers and technicians in our office manually calculating and figuring out arithmetical formulas to calculate supplementals or to include an inflation factor in the process of figuring out what the assessment may have been from one year to the next because of the Prop 13 characteristics in the assessment process, 
we have what are called multiple base years, which were, would require somebody to figure out what each base year component was from year to year and calculate that from an older year to a current year. We thought that it would be important if we could to try to automate as many pieces of the process as we could, get out of some of the manual processing, and still um, respect the requirements of Prop 13. Fundamentally, that began with the requirement that the system we needed had to track base years and base year values in the assessment process. That meant figuring out how to freeze events in time, make the system what we call event-driven, so it was uh, able to calculate values at a specific value number or dollar amount, and respect that with relation to the date. Uh, and on a given parcel, a single parcel, we would be able to have multiple base year events. We would be able to apply the inflation factors to those different multiple base year events over years from one year to the next over time. That allowed us to look at the assessments at a particular date in time, essentially freezing that data at that point in time, and keep respect to the assessments as they move through from one year to the next. The system incorporated both the secured and the unsecured assessment roles, so that had the flexibility to do that as well. It also allowed us to do nightly processing of noticing. Once we created the assessment, the computer system would automatically generate a nightly notice for supplemental assessments based on that enrollment and that relieved us of having to do it in large groups and created a great cash flow uh, motivation in allowing that noticing to be done every night instead of waiting for those assessments to be done. It kept the noticing process close in time to the actual recording and events that the taxpayers recorded or had a change in ownership that created the reassessment to begin with. That was very important. Likewise, once the noticing process began, we could build into TAPAS the number of days that were required to wait before billing came out. So it automatically would wait for the billing after the proper noticing period and then automatically bill out and that was a great asset as well. Another part that was really important was w that once an assessment has been created and the notices and bills went out to taxpayers, for whatever reason from time to time the assessor would need to make corrections to those assessments and the way TAPAS was structured it would follow the chronology of events in time by noticing or billing no matter what's, what happened. It would always respect the chronology of the time frames, the calendar, so to speak. So if we did a roll correction on a prior year, it would respect all the events that would happen subsequent to that roll correction and re-notice and rebill accordingly. That process of not having to manually figure out the inflation factors or the subsequent events was a huge time saver, so that was really important. And finally, at the end of all this process, when we end up closing the assessment roll, TAPAS was able to create new reports for us for roll closing that basically gave us better accuracy in reporting the assessment role, better ability to look at reports for quality control, and if we needed to customize something in a report, we had the flexibility to do that. Since the time that TAPAS came into place, we've done a number of things to enhance it. Uh, one of the biggest things was something that we call Compass, which allowed us to incorporate a lot of different things. But kind of most importantly, it allowed us to build into this process a workflow process for the assessment and appraisal system process to track events from the very origin of it, whether it be a deed that's recorded or a new parcel, and at the same time electronically move those workflow events from one 
worker to the next electronically. That meant that we could get out of the papers process of moving paper from one person to the next in order to move work. It would do it electronically. Once the data was entered into the TAPAS compass system, then it could move from one person to the next once any individual finished his or her work on that product. And that was a big piece. Plus it allowed us to really track those events and not lose track of where they were or not lose any events. It was electronically maintained and that allowed a little better quality control that we lo didn't lose track of anything in the process. We also developed some enhanced property characteristics when we incorporated the compass elements. Uh, and in the workflow process, when an appraisal product got done, we had uh, workflow elements that would allow us to incorporate uh, appraisal review. And it, once approved and reviewed, it would go directly to enrollment. So that again saved a lot of time. Uh, in terms of enhancements, some of the things that we've done either more or less directly with the Compass product and the Tapas product that work kind of hand in hand was to allow for direct enrollment of sales, uh, base your transfer, really a paperless environment once we scanned images. Uh, we also develop a semi-automated market comparison form, um, drawing programs, and automated cost data summary projects that would allow us to do all these things somewhat in either a fully automated or semi-automated process and the Compass Tapas product would then be able to embrace that and carry it forward from through this workflow process all the way to enrollment. So that was, and we continue to work on that to continue to develop with, with different things today.